I'm sorry, yes, I'm two students, Fiona and Joseph in the second grade. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. 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 yeah, there are friends of five and six for us. We have to go over to as well. Two and five. Yeah, your stuff is we're not under person. We're not. We're not. Uh, no, uh, Arizona State and yeah. yeah. so, 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 Texas. So, so,
but uh, I know a lot of people probably weren't able to make it, so watching online, so welcome all of you that are watching online. Uh, we appreciate your support and uh, desires to find out what the Lord's doing with the school and uh, how things are going and uh, looking ahead a little bit to uh, the next steps that we have um, as God opens and closes those doors for us as a school. Before we uh, get into this, let me open up in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we know that by your hand of providence that you are moving in this world. We are thankful to be a part of uh, your process of building up the next generation of warriors for you. Uh, whatever role we can play, big or small, Lord, that we uh, humbly submit to your plan and your will. We are thankful for the, the staff and the faculty that you brought to this school, the, the, the families that you've drawn here as well. To deepen our commitment to the uh, ideals of the this, of this school, the classical and Christian uh, ideals of education, but more than anything, Lord, that we would be obedient to your word, look to you for wisdom, and in all things that we would do, we would glorify you. Bless this time that we have that uh, we're able to um, talk about the school. Just thankful and grateful for all that you've done for us and with us. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Well, I'd like to just kind of give a quick, a, a quick outline of what we'll be talking about today. And um, as this is the six key points of our, um, we are accredited as a school from Association of Classical and Christian Schools, our national accreditation, accrediting body. These are the six things we look at as a school. So I want to 
want to talk kind of in these these terms. It's also how we're framing our strategic plan, and uh, so it just helps kind of categorize what we're to do as a school and how we are being uh, held accountable with our accrediting body. We have been blessed with a, a dramatic increase in enrollment over the past couple of years. God has drawn um, committed families to come to this school. We are thankful for them. Um, one in attendance today uh, <laughs> with the Rileys. Um, but one of the things I was reminded of is that uh, one of the things that businesses sometimes um, slide into as far as measuring their um, their success, they start looking at bottom line, they look at, they look at numbers, and they start kind of quantifying uh, success based on specific numbers. Although we are thankful for these, the growth in enrollment and then the things that subsequently go along with that and all the blessings of that, I would like us to continue to be reminded that, that the most, that our, that, that where we're going to judge ourselves to be successful is based on the mission of the school. And how we calibrate ourselves needs to be aligned to what the founders of the school set out and we as legacy bearers of that mission and of that vision need to continue to calibrate based on what this mission is about. We exist to glorify God first and foremost. We are a school that is based on the ideals of classical and Christian virtue. We also believe in the integration of faith and learning all of life. Can you use my, my too short? Sorry. I'm um, getting reports they can't hear online. Okay. I'm going to turn off the mic. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. We've had to move our normal live streaming to a more remote thing. We don't have the uh, professional audio, so hopefully this helps. Um, so I guess give me the thumbs up or thumbs down if I'm not being loud enough. As I was saying, we target the mission statement as where we measure our success at. And although we like to look at other measures to help kind of support that, that's really where we want to frame what we're doing and how well we're doing is based on what the vision of the school was by the founders. The second thing that we look at and the thing that we are calibrating our success on is how well we graduate students and what, what kind of students are graduating from us as a school. This was recently approved by the school board as a portrait of a graduate. These six things are things that we are looking to grow our students and once they walk out of the the halls of these of this school this is who they will be um, and this is who they will be becoming these are the metrics that we really kind of put up first and foremost as primary metrics of how are we doing as a school and um, we want to graduate mature followers of, of, of Christ so today we're going to talk more about, just as a school in general, how we're doing. As I mentioned before, our accreditation comes from the Association of Classical and Christian Schools. They have been working diligently to, uh, to also expand their, their reach. And so they have um, added a second accreditation to, uh, to their membership, which is the National Council for Private School Accreditation. Um, so we are now accredited by two uh, prestigious national organizations that are um, working together. Um, ACCS vetted the, the National Council for Private School Association to make sure that they align to what they're doing. And what this means is that, um, first of all, just for us as a school, it helps to add to our accountability as a school. Second of all is when students graduate from our uh, from our institution, 
colleges recognize both of these, uh, particularly the NCPSA in kind of the uh, middle states, East Coast area, Florida area. Uh, it was a prestigious um, accrediting body there. So it helps with our students as they look to college and um, um, as, as colleges look at our transcript, it helps them as well. I'd like to talk about facilities and finances. We are um, a school that is um, not state funded. We um, do that unapologetically. Uh, we do not want the entanglements of a government school or school system. It also means then that we are reliant on tuition and other means of income and want to share that as far as like how the school is doing financially. And then also the facilities. We are blessed with the 13 plus acre campus that is um, has some older beautiful buildings on there but with that also is the stewardship of that so just want to share how we're doing with all of all of that first of all the Edward Shell Foundation has been a wonderful partner for us they have um, uh, they have, they own this property so we are renting from them and it's a beautiful partnership that we have we've been able to negotiate a long-term lease their desire is for this to be a school campus for as long as, definitely. Um, and with that, they have worked, um, worked with us beautifully as a partnership. One of the things that they've done is they have taken the large uh, systems on campus that are aging, particularly the air conditioning and the heating systems, and they've invested so far $2 million into the campus to upgrade these systems in addition to the fire suppression system, the fire uh, system here in the grammar, which was um, uh, very antiquated, and they've upgraded all of that system. Eventually, we'll be working on integrating the entire campus. All of that is um, funded by the Ed Rochelle Foundation. None of it is coming from, through tuition dollars or anything for, as far as the school. So they have been a wonderful uh, partnership, a wonderful owner to work with. Um, I have a list of things that they've done so far this year. A big project that's coming up this summer is to replace the air handlers in the second floor of this building, which will require cutting a hole in the roof and pulling them out and putting new ones in. Um, it will allow us to uh, help regulate the, the, the temperature in that second floor, uh, making it more comfortable and uh, more energy efficient as well. And then down the road, looking at continue to replace more AC units, and then tying in all the fire suppression systems on the entire campus. We're blessed with this partnership, and they have helped us also just financially taking off the burden of trying to upkeep a large um, aging facility and uh, taking out that financial burden off of our shoulders, which has been wonderful. With some recent events over the past couple of years, safety has been a growing concern of our families. We, um, we, have, we have a large campus that is somewhat open, and so we also realized that there were some safety things that we could do to help kind of mitigate some of the risk factors. First thing we did is we hired a full-time, uh, we contracted a full-time security guard um, who is here on campus anytime that we're doing here during school hours. The second thing that happened was they, that, that just recently we've upgraded and added cameras to um, all of our buildings. There were um, several cameras that were just aging that we've upgraded, and then we've added cameras to some of the blind spots that we have on campus. We're now up to about 23 cameras throughout campus, which allows us obviously to have uh, kind of eyes and ears. They're all the modern, uh, modern cameras that allow us to um, kind of monitor areas that were, um, that you know, allow us to monitor areas from the central, um, central uh, computer. And, um, helps us keep track of how everything's going. The last thing is that the fences have been installed. There's fences now on basically three of the sides of the campus. Um, it um, being kind of sandwiched between two busy roads, people would use this as kind of a, a shortcut between those roads. And um, so in schools in session, we prefer not to have people just waltzing through campus. Um, so that's helped kind of mitigate some of that, uh, some of those risks and allow us to, again, just kind of have a better um, idea of what's going on, on campus and, 
and keeping um, keeping people out that we want to keep out and keeping people in that we want to keep in because that's part of the issue too. Um, just want to share this as well. Just um, where where we get the money to uh, to run this school. It's um, obviously no surprise that the vast majority of the revenue that we come in comes through tuition. Our goal as a school and school board is to continue to grow that so that we are, um, um, the tuition begins to fund more and more of our school. We become less and less dependent on fundraising and development dollars, although those are key parts of that. But it allows us then to be more and more financially uh, independent when we're able to do that. You can see other income from sources of, um, uh, that help support the school. Again, no, no surprise that the major expense that we have as a school is through our salaries, benefits, and payroll. Um, being a partnership with Ed Rochelle has allowed that financial piece of the facilities to decrease exponentially, and that's been helpful as far as budgeting. Um, you can see just the other um, other pieces of the pie of where the, the expenses of uh, running the school are. Wanted to remind you of just some upcoming things as it, it relates to um, to finances and particularly re-enrollment. We'll have November 15th will be our re-enrollment kickoff. At that point, we'll also be announcing uh, the tuition for the next year. Um, we try to be responsible as far as tuition, but also realize that um, we have you know expenses that continue to go on, so we try to be mindful of um, tuition and raises and things like that, and, and, and but doing it in a way that's responsible, taking care of our staff and family and facilities, also be mindful of people's budgets. Um, that information will come out November 15th. December 1st is when uh, the uh, enrollment for tuition assistance, that first month is a priority for those that um, will get kind of first looks and they will get the first priority. And then the re-enrollment opens January 1st and open enrollment February 1st. We have had to close classes uh, just because they've filled up. So that earlier re-enrollment time is really a critical part to make sure that, you're, um, that you get um, your spot, your seat preserved. Um, you know, in Corpus, it's typical to kind of drag your feet and kind of wait in your time. We actually want you to be a little more timely on that because that helps, uh, helps us with our budgeting, but also guarantees that spot for you and um, for your children as well. This time I'd like to welcome up Rob George. He's our school board president to talk about governance and administration. Well, good evening. Um, as Travis mentioned, I'm Rob George. I'm the board president here at Annapolis. There are, um, I want to pick up, just go back real quick to a couple of things on finance that Travis mentioned. We operate on about a $4 million budget. And when we talk about how we increase the percentage of tuition that covers the cost of running the school, we see the way, the best way to increase that tuition is by increasing our enrollment. It's not the board's uh, passion or desire to just keep raising the tuition cost itself. We count on our families to help us recruit new families to come to the school. So the growth that we have been able to celebrate over the last handful of years comes almost entirely from word of mouth from our existing families. So we see um, a growth in our enrollment as one of the markers of success in the school. And with that, we're also then able to cover a larger part of our operating budget through our tuition dollars. And that's important because um, as a private school, we're always fundraising but you don't want to leave a giant burden on your fundraising folks and on your families who are already paying tuition dollars to cover a giant portion of the budget. So that's kind of the give and take that we work through as we work through our budget. Um, just a brief introduction of the school board uh, members. There are two others here tonight with us, Mr. Visser in the back and Mr. Cabrera here in the front. And we also have Lane Pepper and Natalie who work on the board. The board has and operates primarily through four committees. Um, the, committees, uh, the Committee on Trustees is basically our committee that um, handles things like board training and bylaws and, and other um, super exciting things for this lawyer, not super exciting things for most people who are normal people. Um, the Finance Committee does what you might imagine it does. It works with Ms. Clower on establishing a budget for the school. It works with um, uh, 
with the board itself on how to plan for certain upcoming expenses. Institutional advancement is really a fancy name for development, communications, marketing, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, that committee is probably our largest committee. That's where most of our volunteers get involved. Um, that committee has a big hand in helping uh, Ms. Lamone as she kind of works through things like our upcoming spring gala and any other major fundraising event that we have. That's where we see a lot of our volunteer opportunities. And then we also have a committee that has been overseeing our special education and what is now called our Imago Day program, um, a program that has a, a handful of kids with special needs um, that the school is able to serve in order to serve whole families in the school. Um, the best way to get involved with the board is through a board committee. So if you're interested in serving um, on one of these committees, you can always find one of the board members. We'll be happy to visit with you about it. The only committee that I know for sure is closed in membership right now is the Finance Committee. But if you're interested in serving on any of the other ones, you can see me afterwards. You can catch us on campus. Um, the board, uh, all of us on the board have children who are enrolled in school, so we are here um, as parents also frequently. Um, a little bit of a higher level discussion about the board itself. We are, we are bound by the mission and vision of the school. And that means that, uh, that we follow the mission statement that Travis brought up earlier, which is to glorify God by providing uh, an educational community committed to the classical and Christian ideals of truth, goodness, and beauty, the cultivation of wisdom and virtue, and the integration of faith and learning with all of life. And as a board, we are committed to those classical ideals. And so we're not a board that comes in and tries to upend the system as it is. This is a classical school, and we value um, the wisdom of those that have gone before, and we try to reflect that as a board as well. And that means our role as a board is strategic. Um, although you will see every now and then board members involved in some operational items, that's because the board members themselves bring particular areas of expertise uh, that may or may not be present in other or available but based on their time commitments for other members of the school administration. So we try to help out where we can, but our primary role is strategic, which means we're thinking about um, longer term strategic plans three to five years down the road. We're thinking about things like what are our facility needs going to be if we're able to continue to increase enrollment. If we hit 350 students, do we have to start splitting classes more? If we hit 400 students, where are we going to put the portables? You know, what do we need to do with our football field? Those kinds of things are the kind of things that the board uh, works very hard to spend our time thinking on because although Mr. Lockyer is the board's only employee, um, there are experts here to actually run the day in and day out of the school and that's not really where the board's expertise lies. Our expertise lies in thinking more and planning more for strategic purposes. Um, the board is also self-perpetuating which means that we don't have open elections. It's not like a public school board where you'll see my sign in your yards and I'll be asking you for campaign donations and uh, it doesn't work like that here. We're self-perpetuating. So what that means is, again, if someone is interested in serving at the board level, get involved in a board committee, serve on campus, you will be noticed. Your opportunity to serve on the board will come by an invitation from the board. Um, as we see needs that we have coming up where we may need to bring in particular, um, particular expertise, we seek to fill those roles like that. Oops, sorry, the uh, the board the bylaws allow us to have a maximum of nine members. As you can see, we have five. Um, we try to keep a decent balance. We'll probably add a couple more board members this coming summer, uh, if that's what God leads us to do. All of this is done. All that we do is done with the with the heart for service. This is not a to pat ourselves on the back, but a heart for service for the school. Again, like I mentioned, we all have children in the school, which means that every decision the board makes doesn't just impact the school, it impacts us at our house. And with a 14-year-old daughter, you can believe that I hear all about the impact that the board has on, uh, on things that are going on on campus. Um, I want to talk a little bit about it. I'm going to put some um, organizational charts up here. There won't be a quiz afterwards. They do get a little bit complicated. We will make these slides available if you want to come back and review them or see them online at another time. Um, the board, uh, the school itself is basically organized into two primary um, divisions, more or less, all overseen by Mr. Lockyer. The slide on the screen now shows our the business side of the school, if you will. And then on the next slide, you'll see, and this is more complicated, uh, this is the academic side of the school, or the school side of the school. So um, we don't currently have a role in the school called a principal. We used to, and then we had some administrative changes, and then we had COVID, and then we had some budget challenges, and the long and short of it is, we're looking forward to filling more administrative roles down 
down the, down the line um, by God's provision both in funding and in need. So over the last few years, we've, uh, Mr. Lockyer has been able to hire um, Mrs. Floyd, who is the Dean of Students and a College Counselor, and he was able to promote uh, Mr. Steckbeck into the Director of Spiritual Life position. So he's been able to increase a little bit of our administrative team here at the school to help Mr. Lockyer not be the sole kind of administrator across campus. We do look forward to hiring more down the road, but we also recognize that as you hire more administrators, you also start to affect what you're able to do with the rest of the faculty, with the rest of the staff on campus. And that's a delicate balance that as the head of the school, Mr. Lockyer gets to work through. So I'll be here afterwards if y'all have any questions for me. I'm more than happy to visit with y'all. Thank you so much for taking time to come out tonight, for time, uh, taking time to watch us online, or perhaps to watch it later. And we're very grateful for all of the volunteerism that we see. I think one of the most impactful things that we see as board members is the time that the parents take and the sacrifices that the parents take to, to entrust Annapolis with their children. Um, we believe our whole goal on campus is to come alongside families to further the discipleship of their children. That's what we think parents are entrusting us to do. The academics is part of that, but as Travis mentioned, the big goal is the portrait of a graduate that he was able to display earlier. We want to know that when our students graduate from here, they are disciple makers. They are warriors for the kingdom. That's how we measure our success at the end of the day. So thank you for your time. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> I'd like to uh, welcome Mr. Steckbeck as um, his, like uh, Rob mentioned, he has, he's been promoted to um, a role of Director of Spiritual Life and, and he spent quite a bit of time this summer, um, he and I and Mrs. Floyd working on basically putting together, we've got all these things that we're doing, can we put it together in a way that uh, is explainable and understandable of how is this how is this matching up to our portrait of the graduate and our mission of the school? And he was able to put all that together in um, kind of a, I think, a way that makes sense and is easy to understand. And so I wanted to share kind of how we've kind of put all this, all the stuff that we do together in a way that shows that we are moving towards cultivating student virtue. Yes, sir. Hello, everybody. Uh, so, like Travis said, I'm Patrick Steckbeck, and I was promoted this year to the Director of Spiritual Life, and it has been a wonderful job so far. Uh, I could talk for a really, really, really long time, like I talked to the board the other day, about my job and what we're trying to do, because I really do geek out about it and really love it. I love the students, but I also love uh, this aspect of the job. But I will do something that men in my profession do not do very easily, which is land the plane. Uh, so, goals of spiritual excellence, you can see them. On there, on the right, before we get to the goals, we have a picture of Dante's uh, Paradiso, and Dante is beholding uh, what we call in theology the beatific vision, so the happy vision of God uh, that we'll all get to experience on the last day. <clears throat> Our goals are to see Christ uh, with the mind, uh, to serve Christ with the will, and to love Christ with our affections. And so on the bottom there, you have various ways in which we try and do that throughout uh, our school. So we have morning time with the grammar, and they meet daily to hear God's word and to work through what we call liturgy, uh, which is a way of them to uh, do worship in an orderly way and develop excellent habits of spiritual excellence. Uh, weekly we do solar chapels, and in that we have thought out a timely liturgy that doesn't detract from uh, weekly worship or try and institute uh, an organized church or anything like that, but we're trying to get our students in the habit of worshiping God uh, in a righteous way. Daily, we do a liturgy called the Benedictio, where we read a portion of scripture, and then we sing a song that functions as our prayer, uh, and it's been getting better and better. Uh, we also do two things, two other things, one called Warrior Leadership Academy, and we could talk a lot about that, but I'll just give you the goal. Uh, the goal, ultimately, is to produce servant leaders who can disciple others, so uh, like Rob was talking about, about discipleship, that's our concern for Warrior Leadership Academy. And then in small group, our goal is ultimately to form holy habits, uh, particularly meditation, and then also prayer, and so we do that in various ways. So uh, we're, please pray for us, that's the, uh, that's the goal of school, so all of this is, you know, functions through prayer, so I really do, I mean that, I really do want your prayers, so thank you all, if your families were listening, and uh, we really care about you, thank you. Thank you. The, the goal of all this, like I mentioned before, is that it would 
continue to work together and point towards virtuous living. We want to cultivate wisdom and virtue. So everything that we're doing, we're trying to be more and more intentional with and trying to get that, to hit that target. The other thing that Patrick and, and uh, Shayla and I worked on is how do we build a bridge from grammar, logic, and rhetoric? Um, those three stages of learning do some, they operate kind of independently, but on a pre-K through 12 campus, how can we get them to flow together more and more? So, can morning time flow into Benedictio? Can, um, can grammar chapel flow into solar chapel? Um, can the Bible classes that they're doing in grammar flow into the Bible classes they're doing in solar? A small group and Warrior Leadership Academy, Academy um, blended into that. How can house kind of grow what's, what's being worked on in grammar and then give kids the more independence? So, thinking about kind of more of a holistic approach to virtuous living and kind of putting all this together has really been beneficial as we have seen the fruits of that already, knowing that it's going to take more and more time as we stay, as we get better and better at it, stay more consistent with it, we're going to see the fruits of that over the next couple of years with our students. In addition to that, an extension of what we're doing, the extracurricular piece of it is that how do we bring in what happens in the gym and on the football field um, into what we're trying to do here on the campus itself? And again, um, thinking about it from a holistic standpoint, how can we cultivate student virtue by including this as part of what we're trying to do? Our, our um, performing arts, our athletic programs are becoming more and more excellent. We just sent a team to Buda, Texas, not uh, no, Am I, is that right? Buda. Buda, Texas. I'm trying. Buda, Texas, uh, the defending state champion. Our football team is the number two seed in the playoffs. We have uh, a fall production coming up with, uh, with tons of kids that tried out for it. So we have these wonderful, excellent things that are going. We want to cultivate student virtue through that. So the it's a, these things are a means to that, to that greater end that we're shooting for with everything that we're doing. We're also adding some uh, things that are more, uh, that are not athletic in regards to, we just added a mock trial team this year. Uh, we have enough people, um, I think uh, Tiffany Fader is helping with that. She brought brownies, so she brought out a lot of kids. We have about, we had about over 20 kids come to practice today, so we have enough for two teams, a varsity and JV team. So these are opportunities for kids to kind of grow and expand in all these different areas. We have speech meet coming up. So these, we want a well-rounded education and give these students the opportunities to do that. So as we are able to do that, um, as a school with the, the financial strength and independence, and we are able to grow our, our school body and population, allow us to expand our offerings, all those things working together, really, uh, I think God is blessing all those efforts. Speaking of school community, the uh, one of the things that we felt like to try to bring a pre-K through 12 feel is to, is to have a consistent school theme of how then shall we live. And those that are Francis Schaeffer uh, fans, obviously, the tip of the hat to, to him. Um, wanting to bring kind of a community feel like we're all in this together, all working towards the same goal. And so our chapel messages have been about the Ten Commandments, answering that question of God has given us a way to live, which is through His commandments. And we also have the big serve. God is showing us how we love our neighbors in a real way. And this is building a big community. We have posters throughout the, throughout the campus. All these things are reminders of Answering the question each day, how are we to live? How are we to live by faith? What does that look like? How are we to love our neighbors? What does that look like? Also within the school community is to engage the community in, um, as we grow, it's becoming more and more challenging, but to not lose the fact that we want us all to be together at these certain key points. So uh, whether it's combined chapel or festival days, um, grandparents Day, pep rallies, bringing the school together to have that cohesive feel that we are all warriors, we're all part of this together. 
And then as parents, we also want to engage you and give you opportunities to grow in your engagement of what we're doing as a school. We have a parent book club that's been going on. It, it, it happens um, like every other um, every other Wednesday. We're working through a, a book called Shaping Hearts and Minds. Parents in Prayer happens um, on a weekly basis. Um, Pals. Um, all these things are ways for you as parents to engage with one another, to build community and fellowship, but also engage with what we're doing as a school. One of the programs that was um, the board approved this year, that's an additional piece, again, as we look to serve our community more and more faithfully, is the Mago Day program. This is a uh, special education program for, for moderate to, um, to severe um, students that would not be able to be in a regular classroom. So they're supported in a special classroom. They are included as much as possible. So typically that shows up in some of the group settings, whether it's some floor time, calendar time, um, uh, PE, recess, lunch, but they're also included in class parties. They also come to morning time and chapel. The subjects that they're not able to be supported in with a regular classroom teacher are then taught by our specialized staff in their classroom. This has been a wonderful addition for us as a school. Um, as you think about um, uh, the, you know, Christ talking about the kingdom of heaven, he talks about in expansive terms, about hence the least of these. So uh, we feel like the classical Christian movement is expansive as well, and that uh, what we feel is a, the best education for a typically developing student is also the best education for one that is atypical. Um, and with that, they get the benefits of a well-rounded education, the scriptural and biblical impact and influence, and then the other students get the, get the experience of, of being around someone who looks a little bit different or, or acts a little bit different than I do. And with that, you grow in your humility and expansiveness and understanding that when we ask who is my neighbor, and we say everybody is our neighbor, well, not everybody looks the same, not everybody acts the same, not everybody does the same things, and it helps, helps everyone grow in understanding what the kingdom of God is really about. This has been a wonderful addition to, um, to our school and to our campus. I'll read um, what Aaron Stapper, the director of the Imago Day program, wrote. Um, as she has been a blessing to this school and has done just a, a fantastic and amazing job. This is what she wrote. As a special education teacher spearheading the Imago Day classroom, I'm delighted to provide you with a brief but significant update on our progress. Our journey at Imago Day, which translates to image of God, has always been rooted in our commitment to recognize the divine worth in every individual. It's an honor to share how our classroom embodies this mission. This year we've made substantial strides in fulfilling our commitment to an inclusive education. We are pleased to announce that we have successfully doubled our classroom size from two to four students. This expansion represents not only our dedication to inclusivity, but also our, our belief in the potential of each student to reflect the divine image within them. It's a testament to our school's commitment to provide an exceptional education to all students, regardless of the unique learning needs. In addition to our growth, we are actively engaged in grant writing initiatives. These efforts are crucial for securing resources that will allow us to provide the best possible education to our students. By seeking external funding, we aim to further enhance our classroom's capabilities and create an environment where every student can thrive and realize their full potential. Our daily work remains rooted in the Demago Day principle, where each child is recognized as a unique creation in the image of God. An exciting addition to our classroom experience is the introduction of an adaptive PE class. While our students continue to attend general education PE classes with their peers, we are immensely grateful for Mrs. Dempsey, Dempsey's support in providing a specialized PE class tailored to our Mago Day students. Additionally, we are privileged to engage in adaptive music and art, enriching, enriching our students' experiences. I would also like to express my appreciation for the collaboration with other members of our campus community, such as Mr. Prothro, who graciously introduced us to the world of quails. <laughs> he kindly brought two quails into our classroom where our students were able to experience a hands-on approach to learning that aligns with the classical education model. 
Through interac interactions like this, we have cultivated a connection to our campus and still in us a profound sense of belonging. I'm continually heartened by the broader Student Bodies Initiative to embrace and support our Mag Imago Day students. Often during recess, students deliberately pause their activities to invite Imago Day students to join in their play. We are truly blessed to witness the compassionate and inclusive spirit of our students who exemplify the true essence of a warrior heart. Again, like I mentioned, this has been quite a blessing for us. The next piece is to talk about academics, and um, probably the easiest way to do that is just to look at some of the standard, uh, standardized testing scores that we, that we take. Our students take the classical learning test, uh, CLT. Uh, it offers assessments that evaluate English, grammar, and math skills. It's a comprehensive measurement of achievement and aptitude. This is, uh, I just want to show you that, uh, first of all, our students 7th through 12th grade all took the CLT test in the spring, and all of those grade level groups scored above the national average. The CLT test is a, is a test taken by class schools similar to us. This is not like an ACT or SAT, which is kind of broadly kind of uh, taken across the board. So these are schools that are uh, classical schools or they are um, college prep schools. So this is a, 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 a quite a sample of schools that are um, academic rigor is as important to them. We are pleased to show that our students are scoring above the average of, this, of that sample size, of those sample of schools. Also, as you can see, as the students are progressing through our school system, as you would hope and as we are uh, pleased, is that their scores are increasing each year. And that, um, so what, what we're doing is paying off as far as like the accumulation of knowledge and the culmination of that as they can grow um, each year. We're also uh, pleased to have an ACA freshman who was recognized as a 2023 Regional Scholar that's given to 9th and 10th graders to score in the top 5% of, their, of the geographic region. We also have um, a junior last year, uh, who's a senior this year, uh, be, uh, become a com commended scholarship, a scholar in the National Merit Scholarship. So these are students that are excelling at a very, very high level, and we're, we're pleased with that. We will expand the CLT testing to grades three through six. We will no longer be using the ERB. Um, we want a consistent measure. We feel like the CLT it aligns better to our curriculum, um, and uh, we will get better feedback as far as like the data that we get from the from the standardized test. Faculty and instruction resources. One of the things that we have um, dramatically increases our access to technology. At a classical school, we see technology as a tool. Uh, it's not the main driver of our education, like uh, some schools uh, think it should be. Uh, but we do see that it's an important uh, way for students to grow and learn as students in uh, as a tool to assist their learning. With that, we've been able to expand. We have 133 Chromebooks that we've been able to buy over the last two years. This is allowing access from grades 6 through 12 to computers. We still need to continue to grow access as our science uh, students need access to computers. This is something that we'll continue to, to work on. We do live streaming on a daily basis to help engage our community uh, with morning time, chapel, special events. We also um, have um, for athletic events, we have um, our huddle camera that we've been able to upgrade and the software and the programming that goes with that to allow people to watch our sports and uh, if they're not able to attend in person, they can see all the home games. That includes grammar, junior high, and high school games. And then we also are allowing, we're also able to live stream select away games like the upcoming state volleyball tournament. We'll be able to live stream if the Wi-Fi signal holds. Uh, um, We'll be able to live stream all of those games to help engage our audience, and we have quite a bit of people that are interested in those games. With that, though, comes the increase of firewalls, software, subscriptions, monitoring, all of those expenses that go with it. Also increasing Wi-Fi access, access points. So 
as we've increased technology, the obviously the expense and upkeep and, and all of that continues to grow. So it is, it's a, we've been blessed to have money and grants that have helped uh, help us expand it, but it's also something as a need that we will um, continue to need to upgrade to allow technology to work in a way that um, makes it effective and not frustrating for people. The other thing that we have implemented this year is a, uh, a teacher certification program. As part of ACCS, they required us to, um, to have a certification program, which we've had in place. What we found though is we wanted to really grow this program to really be meaningful and impactful for, for teachers to grow professionally. This is called a Rete Academy. Rete means excellence, the Excellence Academy or Academy for Excellence. Um, it's a way for teachers to grow and to meet them where they're at to help, um, to help them flourish here at school. We believe that uh, it's a biblical principle to, um, to grow, um, to continue to grow professionally, to grow spiritually, and this is a way for us to provide that. There are three main things that we do with it. It's first of all, the pedagogical training, the actual like art of teaching. The second is just learning what it means to be a classical Christian teacher. And the third is how do you grow your, your domain specific, your content itself. Instead of a one-size-fits-all training program, we've broken it up into these three main categories. First year teachers go through a broad brush kind of how to survive your first year at Annapolis. What does it mean to be a classical Christian teacher? I lead that with the, with the assistance of uh, Shayla Floyd. Year two is led by Patrick Steckbeck. They go through a book called The Liberal Arts Tradition and take a deep dive into what is it, what does a classical Christian education look like? And they spend their year learning and developing and growing that. What was introduced year two, they become very deep and uh, deeply ingrained in. Year three through six becomes a cycle. So this is year, year two. Becomes a cycle. They are assigned to one of three cohorts, and each year they change the cohorts. So after three years, they will have year one, which will be a pedagogical training. Year two is going to be a professional development track. Year three, that's a domain-specific one. Year three, then, is what is it to be a classical and Christian educator. Each year, they're able to go deeper and wider with this information and uh, help, with their, um, help with their professional development. The last section to talk about is our advancement and development. As was mentioned before, we are uh, we have a wonderful network of volunteers, and one of the things that we one of the new initiatives this year was to get our students out into the community to become the hands and feet of Christ. This event called the Big Serve was uh, was our attempt to do that on a big scale. And it allows us to launch then on a smaller scale that idea of serving one another. We're very thankful for the success of it. Many of you were involved in it. It was a beautiful time to go out. Uh, the beach was great. It was wonderful. It wasn't a lot of trash either. So we'll have to kind of figure out, find a place where there's more trash to, to take to pick up. Um, but it was great to see the energy of the students, the enthusiasm, the desire to, to grow, desire to, to serve. We had a group of students go over here to Choice Living and really get pushed out of their comfort zone, but to see them respond in a way in, a, in the humility and desire to love and serve was, was absolutely fantastic. Our seniors went to the Rice School to help, uh, help them on some small projects. And again, to be a part of a, a different kind of out of, the, out of the comfort zone environment and to see our kids just step up and flourish was amazing to see. The development really targets our Warrior Fund, and the Warrior Fund has five main priorities. It supports a lot of what we do as a school, but it has like has some key things that it does. First of all, is it, attack, it tracks and retains um, our, our teachers. The teachers are the lifeblood of this school. Um, they're, they're in the front lines, they're the ones that you're gonna deal with the most. Um, you're the, they, you're, they're the ones that are going to have the most impact on the satisfaction of your son or daughter's experience here at school. We want to have the best teachers possible. I've talked about the Red Academy is us is investing in them, allowing them to grow, 
but we want to make sure that we have the we have qualified and excellent teachers here and to keep them here and want and that re that requires money salary benefits those kind of things so that they can make a, a, um, a living here and not have to be stretched so thin the second one is to create our opportunities so as we are growing as a school, it allows us to open up the doors to things like mock trial, a drone racing team, these, these things, but again, they need financial support to, to uh, expand and create these opportunities that are new opportunities that we feel like are going to be helpful for us, for the students as they grow in their, um, in their, in their virtue and grow in their, um, their education. The third thing is to strengthen what we're currently doing in our curricular programming. As I mentioned before, a lot of these things are expenses that are ongoing expenses, subscriptions, books, um, um, all the different things just, to, just to, to be in a school, in the classroom, require money. The third thing is our extracurricular program. As they're becoming more excellent and growing, there are additional um, expenses to upkeep um, equipment, to keep things safe, um, travel expenses, all of those things. And last is there's a gap. There's a gap between the actual cost, the cost of tuition, and the actual cost of uh, what it takes to educate a student. So that money helps fill that gap, so that again we can become we don't become so reliant on. So we can become um, more and more reliant on our tuition dollars, and not having to look at all of these other things and kind of um, trying to find other sources and to rely so much on fundraising. So the Warrior Fund helps support all those things that we're doing and allows the school to be in a much more stable financial situation. So um, we've talked a lot about how, um, you know, how do you do that with the school sponsorship programs. It's kind of the main driver of how to do that. But the money that comes through the school sponsorship program goes in the Warrior Fund and helps support those key areas. So what's next as we look at, look at um, kind of the next steps for us as a school as we look to the near future? Our strategic plan is a five-year plan as we look out kind of where things are going to be at. Many of the things in the strategic plan are already being implemented, already being, um, you know, we've already talked about this evening. But I'd like to just talk just kind of more specifically. The first thing is to finalize the strategic plan as the board has been working through it in its final stages. There's two last steps. One is to have the teachers look at it, get input. The last part is to have stakeholders, the general public, you guys come take a look at it. So make sure everyone's on board as far as what we're doing as a school and to get the final approval. We're hoping to do that by the end of this, of this school year. The second thing we've talked about already is just continue with their financial independence to um, to be more driven by tuition dollars and let, being less reliant on grants and uh, fundraising. The third is to formalize the board recruitment. Um, we, um, the board, the board members that are will be rolling off. We want to recruit high quality board members on so that we continue the faithful stewardship that they that they have done throughout the years. Next is to upgrade the aesthetics of um, of the facilities. We're thankful for the Ed Rochelle Foundation doing a lot of the big stuff, but the flooring, the general just decor of the, of the classrooms, things like that, requires us to continue to be to upkeep them, the carpets and those kind of things. We want to increase the aesthetic, adding more um, beautiful pictures, artwork, those kind of things, and, um, and just allowing this school to become more, uh, continue to be more and more beautiful. Next is to invest in the staff as we grow the benefits of working here. Um, we, we want people to come here and see this more as just a, a calling and just to barely scrape by. We want people to have a, a solid living here where they, can, where they can be comfortable, raise a family. We love that there's heads of household that are working here, but all of that though requires us to continue to take care of them and to increase our ability to take care of them through the the financial investment we have in them and the benefits of that. And then last, just invest in the student culture. We want students, we want families to come here and stay here and be committed to that. And that retention rate, we want to continue to grow. As each year we've been setting a record the last two years, our goal is to be at 90% or higher. All those things help as a school as far as budgeting and be able to look ahead strategically 
knowing we have a, a committed base of families that we can that uh, we will have a solid foundation going forward. But that for us requires an investment in the culture where this school uh, continues to deliver on the things that we need that we say that we're going to do, and that when we are targeting our mission and targeting the the um, portrait of the graduate, that those students are becoming more and more virtuous in what we're doing. And so. Day in and day out work that we're doing pays off by the dividends of these students graduating and going on and flourishing and, and whatever God calls them to do. The last thing is a quote from John Milton Gregory, um, one of my favorite quotes when it comes to this because he mentions about warriors. Um, basically, the role of the teacher is what he's talking about, but it also has, I guess, a, a general context of the school. And that last line really resonates for for me as we are like what are we trying to do Will we the, the the idea of just being a warrior isn't just a nice little mascot it's actually something that we believe we want we want to raise warriors warriors for christ and he mentions it that are armed and eager for the conflict that um you know um we know that when our students leave this school, life doesn't get easier for them. That there is going to be battles to fight, there's going to be wars to be won, there's going to be dragons to be slain. And in some ways, we're thankful for that because we, we want our kids to go out and be ready for that. Um, it's not just basic training to be able to sit around. Like We want to send them out and to be able to, to do great things. And so, why are we raising dragon slayers? Well, because there's dragons out there. And so we feel that investment, we want to see that. And so for us, we do want to raise up warriors. So we can't do this alone, so I'm thankful for everyone's commitment to this school. We're thankful for your um, you know, willingness to come or to watch online, to know what we're doing as a school. We do feel God's hand of blessing as he is continuing to uh, work with us. Um, and we feel like that we are on point as far as what we're doing and where we're heading. And like I said, that mission statement, that mission that the founders of this school in 1995 put together, and that is, that is our laser focus as we continue with the growth. We never lose sight of where we're, where we're heading as a school. And that has really been our North Star. And again, I feel like God has really been blessing us with the things that we've done this year, and we're really looking forward to the next few years and seeing the fruit of our labors. So again, thank you for your time. If you have any questions, I'll be around, and so will Rob and the other two board members, Shay is here as well. So please feel free to ask us or reach out to us if you're online. And with that, thank you, and have a great evening.